Hello, I'm Elaine Halatunian Reardon, and I'm going to read several poems from my new chapbook, Look Behind You, which is the story of my family's um, immigration to this country from Armenia during the genocide to um, assimilating in this culture. Um, so three generations. Um, and the first poem is called High Holiday Gathering. Graham prepared paklava and burma without a written recipe. Like a newly hatched bird, I'd wait for bits of sweetness to fall, walnuts with cinnamon, honey mixed with lemon. I stood on a stool to watch. Before me, Harypsime, Anush, and Marian had mixed the dough by hand. But when I was six, we bought it from Seven's Market in Watertown. Graham melted the butter in a cast iron skillet. Don't let the butter sizzle, it's too hot. She mixed sugar and cinnamon in a bowl for me. Then she got out the heavy rolling pin and I crushed walnuts beneath its weight. Graham said, be sure the nuts are ground fine. Grind them again, still too big. I pushed the rolling pin hard against the walnuts and then we mixed in cinnamon and sugar. We took one layer of phyllo at a time, brushed it with melted butter, sprinkled in nuts, and then rolled as quickly as we could. Finally, using the sharpest blade, we sliced the fragile rolls and placed them on the baking sheet. Hers was straight and long. Mine crinkled like fabric. I still have the recipe, yellow with age, thin and tattered like phyllo dough filled with handed down memories from those who sat at this table before me. Shushan, Bedros, Chevond, Kachador, Siranush, cooking and eating to honor Hayastan, our homeland no longer on the map. I'm the old one now, and when I cook, grandmother's voice follows me step by step. Thank you. I have a small photo of some of those people. So this is my grandmother, uh, Marianne, standing. This is Haripsime, Haratunian, um, sitting. My great-great-grandmother, and Siranush, the baby, my aunt. Um, the next poem is called The First Time, and it's about the Vata bed. Um, Father Lionel Chevant, who came um, came from the Vatican where he worked after a, a very interesting life of, of journeys from being an, an Armenian orphan, um, being brought up by monks and making his way through the world and ending up at the Vatican. So the first time, it was a year since his last visit and he came from Rome. His gift was something we had never seen. In the kitchen, he instructed Graham, both their heads over the pot, until our meal was ready. We sat at the table, shoulder to shoulder, and said grace, Father Chevant at the head of the table. He lifted his fork and he instructed, put the fork in, roll it around, and then lift it up. His fork rose with neat strands of spaghetti, twirled securely, covered with just the right amount of sauce. We watched and one by one, we twisted our own forks into the longest noodles we had ever seen, becoming adept enough to lift them to our mouths. It was our first time eating spaghetti. I imagined all of the cardinals at the Vatican, sitting silently at a long dining table, twisting strands of long noodles around their forks as they prayed. And there is a reason for that image. Father Chevant had brought Cardinal Adi Jamian to visit. He 
I know he did um, uh, something special happen that I remember at a church in Watertown where we kissed his ring. He later, um, he later was one of the people who was being voted for Pope. Um, and he did not make it, but he was one of the kindest people I've ever met. Um, so the next poem is called Assimilation. Immigration, assimilation. Sometimes it's how the tongue and mouth work in concert to shape a new language or search for work, green cards, or clothing. My teachers were often confused by the unusual Armenian-Irish accent I brought from home. My peers were baffled by foods in my lunchbox. We balanced promises of America on a seesaw. We can't recapture our parents' past. We can only put one foot in front of the other, walk into our own present day, step by step. I wasn't a child with pure blood. I had two races, three languages, and a lingering anguish from a forced march from the mountain village through the desert and memories of a village I'll never see. Next, um, copper jazva. A jazva is the pot that you make Turkish coffee in. And while it's not done these days, it used to be, it, it's in our culture to tell um, fortunes by reading the coffee grounds. And this is a story about that. Graham read our coffee grounds only once when my cousin and I were 15, ready to date. She pulled out the jazva, brought the Turkish coffee grounds to a foaming boil three times, poured our cups full. She had never been willing to tell our fortunes before. We added sugar and we drank at the kitchen table in silence. Then we turned our cups over on saucers. Coffee grounds dripped their fortune-telling patterns down the china cups and Graham began. She turned my cup over and paused. Surprised, she said, mountains. Then she saw, no good boy. Someone new in my life, not worth anything. I was sure she was in cahoots with my dad. Keeping me home, keeping me from dating. Jerry had begun walking me home from school and we had our first date. A week later, I found out she was right about Jerry. And now I live halfway up the mountain. Thank you. The last poem is called Refugees from Endearments, and I dedicate it to Andy Tumajian, who lives near Greenfield, Mass. Um, he came to my home when I was thinking about putting solar on the roof to help me figure things out. And it turned out when we spoke, his grandfather was also a chapetzi. He always wondered what endearments his grandfather had uttered in the language he didn't understand. Sturdy and tall, <coughs> grandfather commanded attention with blue eyes that noticed everything. Torn from the high mountains of Chapet, he settled in the foothills near Albany. Grandfather planted string beans and cabbages each spring. He cherished grape leaves rather than the purple globe fruits, tended gnarled quince trees, attempted mulberries and silkworms. Grandmother prepared stuffed green peppers, simmered okra with lamb on the cook stove. Cleaned up and on best behavior, the family drove up to visit on Sundays. They dressed in church clothes and exchanged them for play clothes later. When grandfather stepped on the porch to proclaim dinner, he had appraised them as they tumbled up the porch steps to wash their hands at the kitchen sink. He watched with piercing eyes and pronounced Tatum Galuch as they scrambled into the kitchen, tucking in their shirt tails. This endearment stayed with him 40 years later. Didn't matter what the words meant, just that they were endearments uttered every time the family
drove to visit. These words from Hayastan traveled to New England with refugees of that time, endearments that had now grown rusty with disuse. <clears throat> Settled with family of his own, one day he found another child of survivors from that distant village who knew the language and translated. Yes, I know that phrase well. My grandmother often said it to me. Tatum tatum galoch, pumpkin head, empty, like a gourd, foolish. Remember, in our culture, you don't want to draw too much attention to what is precious. Thank you. Um, if you want to read a bit more or find out a bit more about what I'm up to, I have a blog online at a WordPress. It's elainreardon.wordpress.com. Thanks very much for your time.